Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Freaky and welcome back to another story. I know you guys love these stories and it's 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 uh it's coming to the point in my uh, YouTube career, I'd like to say, that um I have to really really remember stories because I've done so many already on the channel. It's about I think I did at least 30 somewhere around there that I thought were like YouTube worthy. Like I don't want to just have out a story that's just really blah and boring and has no uh, real premises behind it or if I don't remember stuff about it That's what I like to do with a lot of these stories if I find or remember something. I'm going to uh, Tell it I'm going to you know tell you guys about it and what happened in this uh, point in my life this story though on the other hand um, I remember it as if it was a dream which uh, you guys might be thinking okay. Well, that's not good because well, um, how can you remember a descriptive type of things that happen in it? Well, I was four years old when this happened, so obviously it's going to be hard to remember when you're four years old and what's specifically going on, but I remember it as if it was like, I, I would say more like a dreams type movie. That's what I'm going to say going into this. Um, and it, it it's... It's a, it's a bad story. That's what I have to say. It revolves around my brother and um, some things that you used to be able to get when uh, you were like my age, basically, uh, back in the day at zoos or carnivals or stuff like that, which were foam toys. And they were basically foam dinosaurs or foam lizards or foam reptiles or whatever they were. And they were on like this metal wire that uh, had no backing to it. And you could walk it around. Um, the wire sometimes got really sharp on some ends. Uh, but it was basically just a little thing that kids could buy and walk around with. And it was very, very... Uh, I don't know what to say. It, it, it was very gimmicky and very dangerous to a child that was of my brother's age at the time. And my age even being four. Probably shouldn't had this type of thing accessible to us. So... I was four years old, uh, we just got home from the zoo, basically we were all sitting down in the living room, it was uh, my dad, my brother, and I. I was, uh, I believe so I was sitting on the opposite side of the couch from them, this was my old house uh, back in the day that I used to live in, and what ended up happening is we were all sitting on the couch, uh, my brother and my dad were on the couch opposite of us. And I just remember my brother, he, he used to, like, suck on things. So, like, you know how kids like to suck on metal things because they think it tastes good or whatever? It's super bad for them. But they just did it anyways because that's what they like to do, okay? It's just an instinct for children for some reason. Um, so he was sucking on the end of this wire that I said before can be very sharp. Sometimes it's dull, sometimes it's sharp, sometimes it's in between. We don't know. It shouldn't be sucked on. You shouldn't... It just shouldn't be given to children the way it was, right? So he was sucking on it, and apparently he wanted to deep throat it. Um, because it ended up getting stuck in his uvula. And if you don't know what a uvula is, it's the thing that's uh, uh, the punching bag that you see on cartoons. They don't really do this anymore. It was my type of cartoons that I watched in the 90s. They would show... Uh, like a character like pulling out his uvula and then punching it like it was a punching bag, right? Because that's what it looks like. I believe it's here just for gag reflex type reasons. I don't really know the medical reasons behind it. But what ended up happening is it got shoved or it pierced through my brother's uvula and then ended up getting caught behind it to the point where he was gagging and couldn't retrieve the wire out from his mouth. And I just remember him basically starting to gag on it. And my dad and me kind of look at each other. We're like, oh, what, what is going on? Like me being four years old, this is like new to me. I don't, I've never seen him really do this before or, you know, start gagging. And my brother literally is just like trying to get it out. And then he starts gagging. And uh, this is where it gets really disgusting. And I still, I remember it, like I said, it like a movie. Like it had like little scenes and stuff. It was, it was obviously like earlier in the morning. I believe it was like maybe 11 a.m. or something like that. The sun was coming through and um, just through the blinds. So if you can picture a room, a smaller living room uh, with sunlight coming through the blinds, uh, a couch right in front of it, and my brother uh, being two years old, three years old, or whatever it was, he was sitting there gagging on it until he finally, you know, my dad went over there and tried like helping him out and seeing what was wrong with him. And he ended up uh, kind of almost falling off the couch, not like falling into it, but he 
fell uh, or kind of leaned over the couch and then started vomiting. And this is the first time I've ever seen this in my life to the point where I literally felt super scared for uh, somebody. Like, I, I never experienced something this violent before. And uh, because, you know, I was like four or five years old, so I've never seen something like this. He started puking so much, and it was so red that I was very afraid for his safety. And uh, within, I swear, like, my little brain somehow did a time lapse here. Because from the moment in time that he started throwing up, literally, I swear, maybe two to five minutes... I don't even remember my dad calling the police, calling an ambulance, or whatever. But the fire department showed up, which it seemed like, like minutes. Literally minutes. And I remember them, like, busting through the door almost. And uh, the sunlight just shined through the door. And then I just see, like, three... Uh, Basically, fire department people, fire uh, fighters, come in, even in their full outfits, and uh, they are trying to yank this thing out of my brother's uh, uvula. They don't know what's where it is, where it's caught, what's happening to him, because it, it, we just noticed that it was stuck in his mouth. And I remember my dad was over there helping with the firefighters. They were all huddled around him, around the couch, the light, lights shining through on them, and I'm just, like, sitting there, and like, what, what? what is going on I'm so young and just to realize that this is happening to me is really shocking and it's it, like I said it, it got embedded into my head as if it was like a movie like it's a scene that I remember and I can still remember to this day I remember every little specific detail but there's time skips like I said the fire department just randomly showed up and they're there like trying to help him out he's like crying he's like freaking out still puking there's so much vomit on the ground at this point like so much like Enough where it would be upsetting if you saw someone throw up this much. And I'm, like, sitting here panicking. Like, I really don't know what to do. And my dad ends up telling me to go next door because he doesn't want me to see any more of this. So I run next door. And this next door neighbor, uh, we were kind of, like, friends with. Like, we, uh, my parents apparently had to, like, babysit his kid. I had no idea who the hell he is or what's his name anymore. But uh, apparently he was around br my brother's age. So I run over there. And the weird part about it, they're having a party. They're literally having the biggest party ever during this time. There's kids running around, like I said, that are like my brother's age during this time. And <laughs> I'm not really, you know, comfortable at this moment in time to go into someone's house, especially when there's a whole bunch of people. There's at least 50 people in this house at this period of time that I had to go over and uh, sit with them. And I literally knocked on their back door and was like, hey, hey. Can I can I come in? Can I come in? And they're like, "What what's wrong?" And I was like, "My my brother, something is wrong with him. I my dad told me to come over here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here, okay?" And and they're like, "Oh yeah, come in, come in, come in." And that's when I realized there's like shit ton of people here, and they're all having food and shit. And uh, she ended up giving me like food, and I just remember uh, people were asking me what was going on, and I was like, "I don't know. Something something happened. Like my my brother got something stuck in his." throat and he started puking and they're like holy shit that's really really bad and I just remember I walked down the hallway for some reason and this house had really really weird coloring to their walls like really vibrant colors I went to this back room and I think this was the kids room I don't know whose room this was specifically but it was very very like like survey type of lime green like it was neon green almost and I just remember, like, that kind of connecting to the point where, like, vomit and neon green kind of together. Um, and I just remember sitting in, like, a really tiny chair uh, in that room. Like, one of those little plastic chairs that are super small and just sitting there with, like, a plate of food and just kind of staring at it. Not really realizing what the hell is going on right now. And still, still a little scared, but, like shocked at that this happened to me and then I'm stuck in a house where I don't want to be at and with people all around me that I don't even know and I'm like four or five years old and it was just it was just kind of disturbing actually like now that I'm remembering it a little bit and after that moment I seriously don't remember how I got home when I left this place I just remember it like ending there I don't know if I spent the night there. I went back home later in the night. I could have. 
But I just remember this moment in my life happening. And still to this day, my brother has a hole through his uvula that he could literally put... Uh, you know those little cut-up carrots that are super small that are like in salads and stuff? He once got one of those caught in his uvula. So that is the hole size. But there's a good end to this story. Because these foam animal leash wire things that kids would walk around during the times when I was younger. After knowing what happened to my brother, whoever made these items, I remember seeing later that they had a red plastic cap around the end of the wire so kids could not use these to hook the back of their throat if they actually put them in their mouth. So I don't know how this happened or when they found out. Maybe a whole bunch of kids were doing this. But this was a great ending to the story to wrap up on. That something actually changed from these things because of something that added on to the story of my brother. And it's, it's crazy to think that uh, my family could have possibly changed the future with this sort of uh, uh, thing that was going on with these toys. But I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you have a kid and you ever take them to a carnival and you find one of these things... Make sure it has a cover or a cap or a lock or whatever on it and uh, that your kid's not trying to gag himself with it because it will seriously puncture something and hopefully not your throat.